Hi guys, morning. Uh, welcome to Tabletop Truths. My name is Jordan, and this is Penny. Say hi, Penny. Good dog. Uh, today I'm here to talk about Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. One of my favorite games. It's really unique, interesting, has some really cool mechanics, and is just different than pretty much anything in my collection. Um, it obviously comes highly recommended, um, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about how it works and what you can expect when you open up the box for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. So, let's check it out. That originality starts with the components in, that you'll find in the box for Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. So let's see what we have in here. You don't have a traditional board, pieces, dice, anything like that. Um, what you'll find when you open up the box are your case files, which there are 10 cases to solve in the game. Case 1, munitions, magnet, etc. I won't you know, spoil all these for you, whatever. There are 10 total cases. You'll find newspapers, the London Times, which there's all sorts of stuff on here. Um, births, marriages, deaths, newsworthy items, just like you'd find in a real, real newspaper. Most of it useless for your case, but some of it really helpful. You will find a map of Holmes's London, which has all these different places you can go see. Um, a distance scale, all these parks, and Scotland Yard, and all the stuff you'd expect to find. You'll find a directory of London, which shows you all the people you can go talk to. Um, and that's it. Rule book. That's really it. Look at this rule book. It's only like six pages long, and three of them are the opening to the game where Holmes is talking to you. That's all there is to it. You don't move pieces around the board. You don't roll dice. You don't gain victory points. You don't do anything like that. It's all a game of deduction, solving the mystery. And that's what makes it so interesting. So, this is the game all set up. And there's this kind of simple elegance and brilliance to that. It's nothing like most board games where you're moving pieces around and all that. You just have the city. So in Sherlock Holmes, Consulting Detective, you play as a member of the Baker Street Irregulars. That's Holmes's kind of crew that, that helps him solve his mysteries. Um, before you start a case, you'll look at the paper for that day, which might have some useful stuff in it, some leads you can follow up. It might have a lot of fluff. You have no real idea. You also read the introduction. This is case one. I'm not going to you know, spoil things for you or anything, but where Holmes introduces the case to you and maybe some relevant information, where it happened, uh, what happened, all that good stuff. And then you're on your own, pretty much. So how does a round work? <clears throat> well, you and however many people you want, you're on a team, you're working together. You can play this game by yourself, but I'd re it's more fun with at least one other person. Um, what you'll do is you'll start looking at leads. And let's say you know, someone is murdered at building 83. Well, as a detective, you probably want to check out the scene of the crime. So you would look up in the case book, building 83. Flip through, flip through. Oh, there it is. Ooh, look how long this is. You're going to get all sorts of information about the crime scene you might find um, a note on, you know, the person's body that said they were supposed to meet um, Johnny at this bar at this time. So maybe you go to the bar and you see if you can find any evidence there. Maybe you go to Johnny's house and see if you find any evidence there. Uh, maybe you find a certain brand of clothing or something like that that's, that's been found at the scene of the crime. So maybe you go check out that clothing shop. And every, it's, it's amazing how much they, this game anticipates your moves because I've never had an example where I go to follow up a lead somewhere and they mention information because each, each place, it's not like you do anything there. You can't ask questions. It's all written out for you already. So you're just given the evidence and you have to piece it all together. Um, finally, after you think you've 
put everything together. You've solved who did it, why, all that good stuff. You will turn to the end of the case book where Holmes will ask you a series of questions. Um, almost always, you know, who did the crime and why, but then some other things that you should have picked up along your way that might um, be a little more telling of why, what happened and why it happened. Um, you go through your notes with your partner, you'll try to put all this stuff together, and then you'll write down the answers to your questions. And finally, you'll turn over to the last page and you'll get Holmes's lengthy, wordy solution, which if you've ever read Holmes or seen anything about Sherlock Holmes, you know he solves the crime almost immediately. You then get to scoring. Each question is worth a certain number of points, and then the number of leads you visited is worth a certain number of points. <clears throat> That's really all there is to it. There, there's not a lot going on in rule explanation and all that stuff with this game because it's so freeform and open. Um, I will say with the scoring, you're probably not going to beat Holmes, especially the first time you play. Um, the master here always scores 100 points. And through question, the questions that he asks, you can usually score maybe like 140, 150 if you get them all right. Um, and then depending on the places you go, but Holmes usually only goes to like four or five places before he figures it out. Whereas I think in my first playthrough, we went to like 29 places. Um, the reason being, we didn't really know what we were doing yet. We didn't know what we were getting into with this game. I think my favorite part about Consulting Detective is that it never gives you the answer. Um, too many games... Video games are guilty of this more, I think, than board games, but too many games, if you search in the right place, they come out and tell you it was this person, and this is why they did it, and this is how they did it, and all that stuff. And Consulting Detective never does that. It just makes you think. It makes you deduce. It turns you into Holmes. You have to put the pieces together yourself, and you really you don't usually know if you're right when you go into the end and there's this feeling of elation when you're reading the answers and you're like yes we got it it was that guy and he did it because of this there's this great feeling of camaraderie that you can that you can get from from this game that not a lot of games especially co-op games too often devolve into one person kind of telling everyone what to do, one person really running the team, and everyone else just kind of moves their pieces and does their part. And this game rewards everyone because everyone has different ideas, different thoughts, sees different connections. Um, so it's, it's fascinating, and it's unique among my collection of games. Um, one thing I do want to address with it, some people get miffed by this idea. Don't let this game do that. It has a limited shelf life. There's 10 cases, and once you solve the mystery and you know who did it and why and all that stuff, there's not really a reason to go back and play that case again. Um, that bugs some people. There's 10 cases, and so that means, oh, you, can, you played $50 and you can only play it 10 times? To that I say, yeah, but most cases take eh, two hours maybe to sit down and complete some might take a little less some might take a little more i think my longest was three hours and that's because we didn't really know what we were doing yet but that's 20 hours of playtime, which for 50 dollars is a pretty good trade-off i'd say your you know dollar per hour of fun is pretty good there and in reality, I, I think other than my absolute favorite games that always get brought out and played over and over, there aren't too many games I really play more than 10, 15 times um, on a regular basis. So I think that's pretty solid. And the best part is when you're done with it, you can give it to someone else and you can tell them, this is what I scored. See if you can beat me. Don't try to beat Holmes, try to beat me. And it's just, it kind of brings everyone together. And ultimately, that's what board games, and especially co-op board games, are supposed to do. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Detective. Um, it's unique, it's fun, and it's so rewarding. Possibly the most rewarding board game I have, just because... 
you feel like you've really accomplished something when it's all said and done. So, check it out. Sherlock Holmes, Consultant Detective. Two thumbs up. No shakas today. Thanks for watching Tabletop Truths. My name's Jordan, and we'll be back probably in a couple weeks with another um, recommendation for you. So, until then, we'll see you around. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked what you saw here, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff that you would normally do. You can find me on Twitter at Jordality. It's like fatality, but my name's Jordan, so, you know, makes sense. Um, and check out my YouTube channel. I've got other good videos up. Um, I don't just do board games. I do video games as well. So you can find all sorts of good gaming content there. If all you're interested in is the board game side of things, then head on over to tabletopgameandhobby.com, uh, which is the, the site I write for, and it's a shop right here in Kansas City where I live. Um, it serves all your tabletop gaming needs. There's got tons of blog stuff over there, uh, tons of hobby stuff for you to peruse at your discretion. So thanks again for watching. My name's Jordan. We'll see you soon.